Welcome back, guys, to another roundtable. My name is Adam. With me once again, I have Rusmin Hi. and Victor. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And today, we're going to talk about whether it's time to buy your mama. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, mama. It used to be Fang, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, we, um, the, yeah, I used to be Fang. So yep. now, because Netflix isn't that great of a stock, I mean, I've always wondered why Netflix was included within the big tech titans in yeah. Fang and Microsoft wasn't. But now you know, Netflix is kind of out of the picture. Facebook has changed its name to Meta yeah. and is now known collectively as Mama. So like Meta, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Alphabet. Alphabet. Yep. So these are the big tech companies in the US. And uh, we're going to talk about whether it's time to have a look at them because we're in the bear market. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to have a look at the uh, valuations. And if you're interested in Mama, um, this will be a pretty good time to watch this roundtable. All right. So I think uh, two years ago, yeah. we wrote an article during the peak of the pandemic, you know, yep, uh, yep. April 2020, about how we would invest uh, $10,000 uh, at that point in time. Yeah, during and the COVID-19 crash. During that crash. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we didn't exactly cover MAMA in that article, mm -hmm. but there were some stocks that we did cover. And we wanted to kind of like review the performance up to date. Yeah. And again, that was an opportunity back then and right now we're looking at another opportunity, yeah. opportunity, yeah. opportunity yeah. today. Yeah. Yes. All right, so let's look at the review of that uh, performance. Yeah, so I think we uh, wrote it, I think Kenny is the one that wrote it, right? So how we actually invest, we, we will invest $10,000 during that, that crash, right? So he actually allocated uh, across four companies uh, which we all bought at the time also. Yep. Yep. Okay, and uh, Alphabet, uh, MasterCard, uh, Facebook and Amazon, right? So these are the four companies that you know, uh, if you were to invest at the point of time, uh, based on the share price that you know, uh, seven of April, uh, today I think all of them uh, would have gone up in prices. Okay, so if you look at the performance for uh, Alphabet, okay, let's say at that time they were you bought three share, okay, and today your performance for Alphabet will have almost double, right, and you are now sitting on. Uh, uh, investment value about close to seven thousand dollars based on your initial cost of three thousand point five. Okay. Okay. So I can go on with Mastercard and Facebook, Amazon. Okay, but as a on the net basis, the investment cost at the point of time was about nine thousand nine hundred and sixteen. Okay. All right. And dollars. what is the total? And today's the valuation based on the twenty sixth of June at the time of this recording. I think the prices, the investment value, the whole portfolio has gone up to fourteen thousand four hundred twenty four dollars. Okay. Yep. yep. This is despite the fact that a lot of them have share price have crashed a big time okay, yeah. in yeah, this yeah, in uh, bear market. market. Yeah. 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 And this portfolio is still doing very well. Yeah. Okay. So if you took, measured this last year, yeah. it would have been a lot higher. A lot yep. higher. I think yeah. you probably almost doubled the yeah. entire but that's portfolio. That's the thing about markets. Yeah. It comes yeah. up, it goes up, it comes down. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but you just, we're not looking at two year horizons yeah. because this is two years since COVID. Yes. Yep. Uh, we just want to hold these stocks long term. I, yeah. I still remember at that point of time, I think got some of the comments or something they was saying that why do we, you know, uh, invest in all these, you know, big companies? Why <laughs> we don't go and look at all those growth stocks at the point of time? They mm. are going up 300%, 400%, or maybe 500%. Yep. Right. In the end, all the growth stock now is 80 or 90, 50 to 80, 90% down. And mm. this portfolio is still holding very well. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's a different yeah. philosophy because we have a long term. Yeah. We want to buy yeah. great yeah. companies yeah. and yeah. hold them. We are pretty happy we can achieve yeah. double digit return teens a year. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but some people are looking yeah. to 2x in one year, two I years. mean, if yeah. you time it right, you Correct. could. You, yeah. you could, yeah. But I you still remember be really good at how, that. how yeah. Adam actually replied the comment. I, I, I was reading it. You were saying that we are just comfortable in buying profitable companies and holding instead them. Of yeah. uh, instead yeah. of loss making companies at that point of time. Growth yeah. at reasonable variation, yeah. not, yeah. not crazy valuation. All right, so just to recap, basically the portfolio, if you pick yeah. those companies at that point in time when we released that article, you would still be, I mean, during the despite the bear market yep. today, yeah. you'd be in the positive, all right? Yep. So I think we're not going to cover this exactly the same thing. companies today because yeah. we're going to focus on the mamas. Mama. Yep. The yes. mamas, the big, the yeah. big, uh, the big boys, all right? right? Yeah. So let's go down the line and just kind of like review each of the stocks, yeah. these, the, the big boys, and you know, what the valuations are and you know whether you invest in them today yep yeah okay so of course a big caveat is that this is at the time of this recording i think the prices of uh, what we're going to present or show you will be uh, might be different from what you when you watch this video when it yeah. goes live okay so uh but we are officially in the bear market it has recovered a little bit okay we don't know how it's going to perform okay the first companies that 
uh, were invest that ten thousand uh, dollars. Of course, you need to diversify into four five stock. In this case, Mama. So there's five, yeah, five yeah. companies, right? So yeah. the first one, I think, uh, Alphabet, right? So this is the company that I think uh, we all know, right? Google, uh, and uh, have been very dominant in the yep. search uh, market. They have cornered around close to uh, 80 90 percent of market share in the entire global market for okay. search, right? For yeah. search, except yeah. China and uh, Russia. <laughs> okay, uh, but this uh, the, this is the company that is very dominant, and you know, when it comes to keyword advertising uh, you have to look for google right uh, of course social media you have to look up for uh, facebook or even or tiktok right so i think why i choose alphabet is mainly because it's been you know, part of our life you know my life can't live without google yeah okay i can't live my life without google i, I okay. was in spain <laughs> last week okay i used everything google yep. <laughs> how to get around all the restaurants looking for shops maps yeah everything translate even if Google translate oh, I yes. can't speak Spanish right so I have to like, <laughs> translate everything so Google yeah. is amazing yeah, yeah their Google translate is very yeah. good it's really yeah. good yeah. and yeah. on top of that I think they also have a you know, very strong dominance on their Android uh, yeah. phone okay there's only two nations in the world uh, Android or iOS yeah okay so <laughs> uh, I mean Google has about 70 percent market share in that okay so that actually you know it's a cash cow for them to bring a lot of advertising revenue including their Android store okay so and the runway for them is still very very long okay the digital ads and you know, spans where I think about of it actually goes to um, Google and uh, Facebook will exp is expected to continue to grow over the next uh, three years okay yeah. so the runway for them is still uh, you know, still quite bright okay so Google is one of those companies that I'll look at. And if you look at the valuations today, of course, uh, they are trading at about you know, price to operating cash flow between uh, 15 to uh, 25. 25 okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, at this stage of this recording, I think they are trading in the teens level. 19, 20. Uh, 19, 20. So yeah. slightly discount uh, or rather um, fair value. I think this is a company that I don't mind owning it for a long run okay, yeah. in the, for, for fair valuation. Of course, uh, there are risks uh, when it comes to Google. And one of it, of course, is the rise uh, TikTok okay, so TikTok now of course the uh, people may want to advertise there because the ads dollar spend there could be a lot cheaper. Whether if effective, I don't we don't know. So you think that people yeah. would TikTok would be encroached onto Google's they space? Probably would take away a lot of uh, market share okay. as we move along. As you know, when it comes to advertising, people compete on uh, eyeballs, right? Okay. Yeah, but I think Google dominant will still be much safer as compared. Yeah, to I think it's because uh, search yeah. is kind of different when yep. when you compared to I guess videos. Videos, yeah, it's a different form of uh, yeah content. But then you have YouTube that yeah. Uh, yeah. could potentially yes, yeah. get not affected. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So, uh, but I think YouTube is picking up. Yes, yeah, YouTube yeah, because is uh, very well. I can I can see that more people are looking at YouTube. All right, at this moment. Yeah. Yeah. So let's wrap up on Alphabet. This point. So back to his valuation, basically. It's a uh, fair, fairly value fair at this fairly point, value, yeah. and uh, it's within the range, right? E yeah. Yes, yeah. When we first bought uh, Google in 2019, I think it was a, a fair valuation as well, and today it's done very well. Okay, us. so yeah. that's for Alphabet slash Google. Uh, what about the next uh, stock? Yeah, we can move on to talk about uh, Meta, right? All right? Which is your Facebook. And I think among the mama is the worst performance in terms of the share price, <laughs> right? Because there's a lot of bad news about this company. Yes. If you look at the valuation itself, it's really traded at um, very way below its uh, average. It's average about 29.51, right? Now it's like traded at 12.9 times, right? So it's, it's the cheapest valuation among the mama, okay? And there's a reason why they are traded that way is because of the I Apple iOS changes, yep. right? And also uh, they have a disappointing, you know, um, drop in their daily active user yeah. in the fourth quarter but then it, it have gone back up in the first quarter 2022 and also uh, people are expecting slower growth from uh, meta moving forward but on top of that if you look at meta they are still uh dom one of the Dominant. top dominating in terms of advertising together with um google. alphabet yeah. google right yeah. but but then uh this year they are they are in terms of dual poly between alpha google and Meta, right? They are about 50.5% in 2022. Yeah. But okay, but there's also, of course a risk because moving forward, uh, pe people are expecting their market share, both of them, to drop to 47.7 by 2024 because yeah. of uh, uh, players like 
TikTok, Amazon, Walmart, and Apple. And, people are advertising yeah. on that platform. Yeah, and ROS changes also affected affected yeah. their advertising yeah. ROI. Yeah. And correct. they're spending a lot of money on uh, yeah. the metaverse, metaverse yeah, which correct. is investment money yeah. that's going that direction. Yeah, yeah. so that, 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 that segment is still losing losing money. money. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's not profitable yet. But then, uh, in the I think there's a latest data that I, I saw recently that they are they are I think Oculus mm-hmm. right they are they are they now commanding about 80% market share yeah. mm-hmm. which uh, is still, still a small, small market still a business, small yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's part of the business but yeah. it's a small market you don't know where you're going to turn to but if they were to crack that code that's going to be a big market but right now you just based on the current thing they are quite risky because they are really fighting uh, the Gen Z which is the next generation because yeah. if yeah. the Gen Z don't go onto their platform then they will then the, the 10 years, 20 years down the road, then there could be a very big trouble for them, right? Mm-hmm. So right now, the Gen Z, right, uh, in the US, they are mostly in either uh, Snapchat or or TikTok, right? So, so but moving forward, uh, people expect uh, Instagram to actually uh, increase their market share because of their reels and all this, right? And Snapchat to drop their market share. So there's still chance that they can fight because uh, the Gen Z does use Instagram. So that's okay. the only thing, but uh, they definitely don't use Facebook. All right, right? so mm-hmm. what about uh, Meta's valuation then? Like, like I mentioned, now they are traded. Uh, they are the lowest valuation at twelve point nine time uh, PE. Uh, their average is about twenty nine point five one time, right? Mm-hmm. So at current share price is about one six nine point four nine. So twelve point nine times earnings is yep. actually really low. Yeah, <laughs> correct. <laughs> it is yeah. for yeah. for a company like yeah. like like Meta. Yeah. I, like well, like we always mention because there's a lot of bad news. That's why their yes, valuation is very low, true. right? But yeah. then if they will, if they can turn turn it around, then this company is going to be the biggest gain. So it's really have to weigh the risk and the reward right. and see whether you're comfortable with so it. So basically, yeah. to summarize, there's a lot of question marks about yes, Meta, a yeah. lot of risks, yeah. Uh, yeah. uncertainty there, yeah. which is the reason why the share price has come down correct. and of course the, the valuation has come down as well. Yeah. Uh, but it is the, the cheapest one yes, correct. among the mama stocks. Yes, right? correct. All right. So the next uh, stock I'm, we're going to cover is basically Apple. So I'm going to cover this one. So when you look at Apple, I remember looking at Apple maybe... 10 years ago and I think its market cap at that point in time was 500 million mm. and people were asking can Apple double and grow into 1 trillion because it was at that point already the biggest or one of the biggest companies in the world yeah. and it went on to 1 trillion and then people asked could two it trillion. grow even bigger and now it's 2 <laughs> trillion so when you look at Apple I think the thing is everyone knows it as you know for the iPhone I yeah. think that's the one of the biggest inventions in yeah. recent history and but the growth isn't going to come from the iPhone anymore because I think the smartphone market is pretty much mature yep everyone has a smartphone nowadays it's either an iPhone or an Android so the growth is going to come from other areas yeah. so the uh, three areas which I think they're going to grow much faster is going to be through services through the subscriptions that they have so uh, Apple Fitness Apple News uh, Apple Music uh, um, iCloud stuff like that where you have recurring revenue, yeah. and then through wearables. So I think, you know. This is one of it. Yeah, Apple Watch <laughs> is one of that. <laughs> so I think those are great inventions. I think healthcare is going to be big yeah. as well. It helps a lot with when it comes to exercising. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, your AirPods are a great selling item as well. Yeah. Uh, I have a pair of uh, AirPods, which are great. Right. Life changing, huh? Life changing. <laughs> <laughs> the, these guys bought me the, the pair as a birthday gift and I've been using them ever since. And of course, uh, through the new products, through uh, Apple Car, and which oh. is rumored, which I think most people, are, they they believe that Apple is working on. Yeah. And of course, uh, AR and VR, or visual, yeah. virtual reality and augmented reality. I'm looking reality. forward actually as an Apple fan. Yeah. <laughs> so there are some risks when it comes to Apple. Basically, they have their supply chain is pretty much in China and of course, Rare Earths uh, mined in China as well. So you do need to look out for that. And of course, cybersecurity, your know, digital identity is on Apple. If anything ever happens to that and they get hacked, it's going to be a big, big issue. You don't need an antivirus for Apple, you know that? You, you, <laughs> no, you do have to be careful. So you do need to patch things up. So yes, yeah. anyway, when it comes to <laughs> Apple, let's go to its valuation as well. Uh, if you take a look at their PE, uh, they trade between a range of between 15 to 40. Okay, so their PE has basically expanded over the years. Uh, so if you take the, the five-year average, the PE is about 21. So they're trading about 23, 22 at this point in time. So slightly overvalued but near fair value as well so uh, pretty much uh, consider uh, looking at Apple as well yeah yep. okay so uh, another companies that you can consider looking looking at is of course uh, none other than Amazon 
right and this is where and you know, prime days is almost here by the time you watch this video <laughs> so uh, amazon is one of those uh, you know, companies I, I enjoy shopping there because of the great experiences it's one of those uh, you know in the us they have close to uh, 44 percent market share right so uh, 40 over percent market share alone right when it comes to e-commerce market and uh, and there's still a long runway for e-commerce in the us because the penetration as percentage of total retail spend is only about 19 percent if compared those in the china is actually actually easily 25% to 30%. Okay, so uh, still a long runway to go for Americans to shop online. Okay, so uh, of course, uh, when it comes to their dominance uh, in uh, cloud, okay, services, uh, infrastructure as a service, uh, they have the highest market share with 30 over percent market share. Okay, so it uh, used to be very high, you know, but then Microsoft caught up you know, and the rest of the players actually continue to, to rack up a lot of market share. Okay, but the, the uh, AWS itself is actually a cash cow for them and it's been very stable and predictable and a lot of their existing clients are actually buying more uh, you know, top more modules for, for those uh, software as a service uh, company. Okay, so Amazon, of course, uh, the risk is, uh, you know, you need to watch out for their over expansion uh, capacity, which recently they, uh, they happened to them, they track their earnings uh, because they realized that after COVID, people are not going out, they are spending less on uh, e-commerce and as a result, they have uh, excess capacity, okay, which actually that caused to drag in terms of their earnings and that caused them to be in the loss, uh, loss making in the recent quarter. Okay, but over the midterm, I expect this to normalize because as the percentage of e-commerce penetration of the overall uh, total retail spend should continue to go up. Okay, so uh, but the worst case situation is you know this asset capacity may continue to drag their earnings mm -hmm. moving the next. Uh, few years okay so this is one thing that you need to watch out for in terms of valuation uh, because uh, the uh, working capital for this year and uh, last year has been disrupted due to uh, working capital uh, due to inflation and the supply chain issue they have actually spending more on the capex so I use uh, total enterprise value over EBITDA as uh, valuation to look at them and if you look at the range that they typically trade at between uh, 20 to uh, no, almost 40 there, uh, 50 there about. Okay, so at this stage, they are, they are looking at about uh, 20. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they usually trade about 30 to 50 there about. So That's they are region. undervalued. They are very cheap. Okay, okay. Amazon, Amazon is very, very cheap. Yeah. Okay, and their dominance, I think, is not going away. Okay, so there's, there isn't a lot of a challenger with their. And they have business. a growth driver, the cloud, right? In the, the cloud, cloud itself. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So I think Amazon is uh, pretty interesting to look at right now at this point. Yes, yep. yeah, it's one of those uh, very innovative companies that come out with uh, no, interesting yep. product. All right, yep. so yep. let's move on to the last uh, stock of the month. Uh, which is Microsoft. So yep. basically Microsoft, I think most of you guys already know what type of business they are in. So I'm just going to briefly talk about. So basically their business is split into three. Uh, first one is actually the productivity and your business process. So basically that is your office mm -hmm. or the, the office software. Then you have the intelligent clouds, which is the cloud services, which is very similar to uh, Alphabet and also Amazon. And lastly, is it's more of like personal computing. It's the computer, the windows and all this, right? Yep. So these three segments is basically, uh, they are quite evenly distributed, mostly plus minus, mostly most all of them is like about one third of the business. Yeah. Right. I think uh, when it comes to Microsoft, right, uh, I think the growth mainly comes from uh, their cloud business and also their subscription business in terms of the Office 365. Uh, both these business are still growing at double digit. So if you, if you look in terms of their intelligent cloud business, right, they has been growing about 21.7% for the past five years. And the latest quarter, right, they actually went up 26%. Mm -hmm. So it's still, it's really a high double digit, okay? And they're really number two in the world. Yeah, they're number two in yeah. the world in terms of the cloud. And if you were to look at the chart that I have here, right, in terms of the market share trend, right, uh, even though Amazon and Alphabet, they're also in, inside the uh the cloud business right uh you can see that microsoft is the one that is really uh taking up the market up, share yeah. on it's on the uptrend but amazon is rather they they are just maintaining or maybe taking up a bit and all this uh alphabet they are also taking the market share but slowly but the amazon one is more eh, sorry the microsoft one is more of a steep mm -hmm. steep uh taking up market share so they are really doing very well for uh microsoft okay so that that's their cloud business their growth driver but when it comes to risk i think the main risk is really uh, the personal computing side i think a lot of things are matured in terms of the computer side and also if people were to switch to more tablets or maybe uh, mobile phone then mm. I think probably the personal computer business going to be down but I, I think unlikely to be that because it's very hard to work on your mo mobile phone but can you can work on your tablet yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. the only set 
uh, bad part about them, right? Or if you have a, a, a competing software to the Microsoft Office, which I think is very, very hard to replace. Mm -hmm. And lastly, the competition is going to be steep, right? For the um, cloud business also. Yeah. So that's this are you want to take note about it. Right. So the share price of Microsoft right now is about two six four point eight nine. So uh, they are. Average for the 10 years is about 28.85 times. So right now they are traded about 27.9 times. So they are actually fairly valued and and they are still growing at double digit, uh, high double digit uh, in yeah. terms of revenue growth, right? All right, so it looks like pretty much all of the mama stocks are either fairly valued, just slightly overvalued or even yep. cheap yeah. in the case of Amazon yeah. and I guess Meta as well. Yep. So I think, uh, I mean, there are five stocks, you know, I mean, I think we have <laughs> fractional uh, you know, trading right on these, you yep, can kind of like yep. put everything in a ten thousand dollar portfolio. But if you were to like choose all five, you know, or you if you wanted to just pick, you know, in a way that you would rank them, yeah. How would you rank the mama stocks? Like, which one's the most attractive investment in your opinion, from yeah. the best to the worst? I think at this stage, uh, Amazon will be my top picks okay, okay. because yep. uh, the uh, dominance in the AWS is really the one that bringing bringing the bar off the uh, bottom line. Okay, so even the e-commerce you know, segment have become loss making. I think that part will should stabilize or normalize over the next uh, you know two three years. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, and I don't see any you know emerging threat like, with the uh, AWS. Okay, because even though Microsoft is taking a lot of market share, they should. Their clients should stay with them, and it's yeah, a growing pie. As well. It's a yeah, growing pie. Okay, yeah. so losing market share doesn't mean they are not bad. Yeah. Okay, so uh, they can maintain market share and the values still go up. Yeah, right? yeah. because yeah. the industry is growing. So in terms of valuation, they are the cheapest. Okay, they are almost as cheap as compared to uh, Meta, and at the same time, their quality is still remain intact. Okay, okay. over yeah. the next uh, five years, ten years, I do still see that Amazon will be still very relevant to where right. we are. So today. Yeah. Amazon will be your number one pick, number one pick at this yes. point. What yeah. will be the next one then? Yeah, so Alphabet. Uh, Alphabet. yeah, Alphabet. Yeah. Okay. So I think my number two is will be also Alphabet. Uh, I think these are the this is the companies that I think will still be you know relevant in my life. Okay, so I don't see it as a big threat. Even though I mentioned about TikTok, I think search is something where no one can really compete. Uh, with them okay so uh, this is with my second one of course uh, here we only do a brief summary of the business why we like them and the brief risk okay uh, maybe if you are investment quadrant members I think you can uh, have a full access the entire analysis of Google I think about close to 45 minutes long there about yep. yeah and we break down even more details on each yep. of these uh, segments itself. okay so here we only do a summary version mm -hmm. uh, okay so yeah so Google will be my uh, second pick because the valuation is also quite reasonable right? mm -hmm. as compared to last year it's a lot higher yeah, right. This time around, they have come down a lot. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Google Alphabet is number two. Number three yeah. would yep. be? So number three, I think it will be Microsoft, okay. right? With their dominance and also their growing market shares. And I think fair value and their revenues are growing uh, in terms of the cloud. It's about 20 over percent. In terms of the office business, it's about 17 percent. So mm -hmm. I think I think fair value is a decent price to pay for them because I remember that we paid for Alphabet for fair value. In the end, the value still double up yeah. to that. So yeah. I think Microsoft can be a third pick on that. Okay. And then following Microsoft would be? Uh, Apple, I think. Apple. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so this is the first time in my life that you guys have put Microsoft above Apple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah. Apple will be in the fourth choice. Yes, correct. Yeah. All right. And finally, then your Meta, which is the worst performing with a lot of extreme bad news on them. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that's interesting because Meta is cheap, but you still put it as your fifth choice. Yeah. yeah. Because even though it's cheap, because basically yeah. it's not as great a business as the other four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, among the mama, I think Meta is the lowest in terms of uh, yeah. you know, quality, all right? Okay. Because that, there's a lot of threat you know, coming yeah. after them. Right? Yeah, yeah, there's still a lot of questionable uh, uh, news, uh, bad news about whether they can succeed or not. But overall, they are still dominance, okay. right? So you mm. cannot take away Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, suddenly, one right? Yes. People still have to advertise yeah. on Facebook. That's the only two platform that is really dominating the. Advertising Facebook and Alphabet. Yeah, and but sometimes you know yeah. the least expected stock that you think you'll perform yeah. in the India become the best performer. Correct. Yeah. Because yeah. the expectation for Meta is so low. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah. So yeah. if any change in expectation, this company's uh share price can also outperform the rest it of the It could just pop, right? Yeah. Just one pop. one great yeah. quarter. It just yes, like yes, correct, yeah. correct. So so yeah, so you 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 can see I think when when we rank this right, it's not to ask you buy every one of them, but it's to give you a perspective of how the ranking is, then you buy based on the yeah. risk that you can accept. 
All right. right. Because some people they may like Meta, but some people I think not I mean all yeah. five are great businesses. Yep. Yes. They're the mamas, yeah. right? They're, yep. they're the best in the world. Yep. All right. Yep. So you can't really go wrong with them yep. Yep. in a sense. But again, no recommendation to buy or sell. Yep. Again, it's based on your risk yep. profile. Yeah. We will show you how we allocate the ten thousand dollars based on the ranking here. But usually we'll do a fully Equal diversified. Split. Yep. Yeah, Equal split. Do, do that but way. just to show you the price that and at the time this recording and yep. how is it like. Maybe we will track back. A uh, few years down the road, and then we do another round table. Yeah, like we'll this. do yep. a Talk follow up on this. the mamas as well. Yeah. Correct. So this is how we will rank it based on the, you know the quality of the business and evaluations at this point in time. But again, they're all great businesses. Yeah. Of course, you can always just buy all five. Yeah. But no recommendation. Please do your due diligence. diligence. Okay. Yes. So one more question again is like one quick question is what if prices go lower after you buy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then of course, uh, this ten thousand portfolio will not do anything, right? Yeah. I mean, personally, if I have more cash, of course, I will add on to okay. you know, whichever there's. Uh, become more attractive but then diversification will still need to be intact okay i don't okay. want to be always posed into one stock mm -hmm. okay so that's something that you need to have the discipline on yep. yeah okay so i think we've covered mama again uh this is just a very surfaced uh, analysis yes there's yeah. so much more we can cover i mean like i said the analysis in investment quadrant uh on a alphabet lot, along is like yep. more comprehensive a lot more yeah. comprehensive yes. they really go through everything so i think we talked about investment quadrant in our previous round table about the system or process for you to basically used to analyze as a framework yes, for you to yeah. analyze stocks and we use it to analyze all the mama stocks and of course the example that we have the case study that we have in investmentquadrant.com mm. so what else do we have in investment quadrant that you can we learn do as have well? uh, you know live webinars which you guys can attend and you know, see us live and yeah, ask correct. us a live question i think that's the most probably the most valuable that people appreciate correct. because they get to you know uh, see us yeah. how to analyze stocks on like, based on real yeah, experience like over your shoulder right yeah, over your shoulder, yeah i mean yeah. It, uh, of course, at the end of the webinar, we'll be sharing uh, two uh, undervalued case study. Mm -hmm. Right, that is undervalued right now. That is not your mama. Yeah, right. there's other stocks out there. Right? There's undervalued also. That we should, uh, have a lot of potential. That's unknown. Some yeah. is unknown. Yeah. And most importantly, of course, we will need to. We will be supporting you. Right? So you can yeah. ask questions yeah. and all that. So basically, investment quadrant, um, you know, has uh, is basically you know a course, an online course which you can access anytime, and there's a live webinar component. Yep. So if you want to check it out, please go to investmentquadrant.com slash YouTube. That bonus for the alphabet. Uh, case study will yeah. be included as well just go to investmentquadrant.com slash youtube so i think that's pretty much it for this round table right guys yep, yep. all right so i hope that was a good update on mama and the valuations again do check them out uh, i think uh, these companies are here to stay yep. you know and the valuations are looking pretty good in this bear market at this point in time of course do your due diligence and find yeah. out for yourself so once again my name is adam that is rusman that thank is victor you. please you. check out investmentquadrant.com slash youtube if you're interested to find out more about that course and how we can help you invest uh, better and more profitably as well and of course you know like this uh, video if you like what we're doing and of course subscribe to our channel many more roundtables coming up and we'll see you around again